Hi, I'm Coach Corey Wayne, and this is my video coaching newsletter. And the topic of today's newsletter is going to be friend zone, decades of frustration. What's interesting is I got two emails from two different dudes, and they're both they've both been in friend zone with these two with two particular women. One guy a decade, he's been stuck in friend zone. The other guy, thirty years, which is crazy. So it's just kind of cool that both these emails came in around the same time. So I thought this would be a good good topic to go over because I know a lot of guys are in this situation because I do get quite a few emails on this topic from time to time. But somebody's been in it for ten years or thirty years is pretty pretty rare. So I thought it'd be a good video to go through. So I have a quote that I wrote, and we're gonna go through the first guy's email. And the quote says, love is about giving without attachments to any outcomes. It's a gift that requires nothing in return. In the context of a relationship, it's about mutual giving and receiving of love willingly and enthusiastically. However, in order to love another effectively and in a balanced and healthy way, you must learn to love and respect yourself first so you can set healthy boundaries and hold people accountable who violate them. Just because love is about giving doesn't mean that you allow yourself to be used and taken advantage of. People who truly love you will want to make sure you feel loved and supported. Most people who you love won't love you back in the same way. Self-love means you will keep searching and won't settle down unless you find someone who makes the same level of effort. Your actions communicate how much or how little you value yourself. And that's the important thing in these a lot of these situations is just how the guys are looking at themselves. We, we tend to want things that we have to work for, but a lot of us, maybe me, most of us, when we see things aren't being reciprocated, we often try to give and do even more. And the other person or even other people perceiving what we're doing show that we have a lack of respect for ourselves. And then you get little acts of disrespect here and there. And the person who wants to be loved just keeps putting up with it. And so no level of disrespect and being jerked around makes a person pause, back up, or set any kind of healthy boundaries. And so what I saw in these two emails with these guys it's just the opportunities are there, but they're not engaging in the right way to lead things to a successful conclusion, like I talk about in my book. Now, the first guy, I think he's just he's only been new to my work, so he's still learning this, but it's a, he writes a good email because a lot of guys are in this kind of situation, whether it's a girl they just met, somebody they work with, maybe somebody they went out with a few times and friend zoned them, and they thought it was a good idea to just stay in friend zone, and eventually they'll get another opportunity which is a bad way to go, obviously. So with that said, let's go to the first guy's email. He says, hey coach, I'm a recent listener, about two days, and feel I may have found you too late with my particular case. I'll try to keep it brief as I would really appreciate your insight. Long story short is that this girl and I met back in 2010. We were both 16 at the time and now we're both 26. At a summer and academic music camp, is where we met and we've been great friends ever since. She lived an hour away and we were both dating people during high school so nothing ever took off. Throughout college we would see each other sporadically when she was back home as I went to school closer to home and she went to school in Texas and then Florida. Each time we saw each other we had a great time and kept it light and fun. After freshman year of college we both understood and recognized that we had and have had feelings for each other the entire time. As if this wasn't frustrating enough, timing also was not right as she was in school out of state. The frustration continued as when one of us was single, the other one was not and vice versa. After this realization and throughout our undergrad years, 2012 to 2016 and 17, we spoke a handful of times when one or the other would reach out. We did have a dinner date and hooked up over Christmas break in 2016, but again, it's, it was long distance. As of 2018, we were both again around an hour away from each other and in the same state. However, we either both were dating someone else 
or one of us was single while the other was not. The entire time I am dating other women and even now I feel that I am supposed to be with this girl and she has said the same about me. Fast forward to today as of roughly two weeks ago. After years of mostly me initiating contact and going back and forth in a will they, won't they situation, she reached out to catch up. So obviously the first thing is that you're doing more of the effort. The important That's the important thing to notice is what kind of effort am I getting back from the other person? Am I doing all the calling and texting or are they just occasionally reaching out? And the idea is in these situations, you want to kind of match in mirror what the other person is giving back to you. Especially like I talk about in 3% Man, which if you haven't read it yet, you go to understandingrelationships.com. Subscribe for, to the email newsletter and you can read that. Not only my first book, but also my second book, which is about pers- purpose and mission and discovering your true calling in life. And you can read that one for free as well, which I highly recommend. But if you're in this situation with a woman, 3% Man is the book where you want to start. Because that will help you. Because basically what, what's going on is you're doing things that are making you look indecisive and unattractive and not knowing when to move forward and when to back off based on how the other person is showing up. And so it's typically what happens in these situations if you've got a girl that you're friendly with or you know or if you've dated and you've hooked up and then she becomes single, this is, I mean, it's pretty typical that she starts getting in touch with guys that she stuck in friend zone or the male orbiters or maybe guys she dated and they really didn't go anywhere or guys like yourself that they've always had chemistry with and hooked up with but the planets haven't aligned whatever whatever you want to call it just life kind of got in the way it was never the right time but obviously if the other person's making an effort there's got to be something there and so if there's an opportunity down the road to explore it and move things forward then you can see where it goes. But you got to know what to do in order to lead things to a successful conclusion in the bedroom, ultimately. Immediately, I could tell something was off and she was being more inquisitive than normal. Well, a woman who's inquisitive like that, especially about your personal life and who you're seeing, is trying to see if you're available and you're single to potentially create the conditions where something new can happen. Especially if they're going through the pain of a breakup and they just want to feel good and they want to feel better. This is just men and women both do this. As I don't use my social media anymore, I quickly searched for her on various apps to see what the guy she had been dating and he had been completely wiped from her social media accounts. And I thought, interesting. I spend the interaction we had giving her shit and bantering in a flirty and friendly kind of way. It's like I talk about in the book. It's teasing and being playful. 90% of the time, you're the charming James Bond, and 10% of the time, you're breaking her balls and giving her shit about things. That's flirtation. That's fun. That's the playfulness, the interaction between a man and the woman that leads. It's flirtation. It's part of the dance, if you will, the love dance. Not being dismissive, but not taking anything serious and chatting more for my entertainment. As we were catching up, I say my bit about being constantly busy with both work and a company I have started. And on top of this, I'm an avid lifter and constantly off doing something active or social. It comes to light that she is no longer dating the guy anymore as of about two weeks. And so we set a date for me to come over and have dinner and drinks. So he did the right thing, created an opportunity potentially for sex tap. And now keep in mind, they've already hooked up in the past let's hang out have fun and hook up is the simple formula it's you know and guys also that are in these situations they go right for the relationship because they think hey we've known each other 10 years in this case we should just be in a relationship together but it's still the process because women fall in love slowly over time you can't just go from being friends one day and then all of a sudden you're in a relationship the next it's just there's a process that you have to go through And when guys get impatient and they try to shortcut that, they start making the woman feel smothered. And she goes from being in a relationship with one other dude to feeling like she's in a relationship with you. And you rush it before she's emotionally ready. And that's where she starts backing off and getting confused. 
And the average guy that doesn't know any better starts getting frustrated and upset with her. Instead of just being an escape, a fun escape from her life and what didn't work out, now you're creating drama and you're giving her a hard time and you're making her feel smothered so she's naturally going to back away. So he says the day comes and it's a great time. I go into the interaction leading with a masculine frame and am there to have a good time. We are laughing and cooking and drinking, listening to records and cracking jokes. An awesome evening that continues with us just chatting on the couch and reminiscing over the past decade we have known each other. Drinks are flowing and we both start getting a little mushy as we talk about everything that we've had as mutual experiences and feelings with and about each other. She starts getting more serious and mushy and I cut it short by telling her to essentially get over here and kiss me. It's a good opportunity. That's what you're looking for when she's playing with her hair and she's sitting extra close. That's when you drop that kind of a statement in there. But it doesn't come in the beginning of the evening. It comes midway through when the signs are there that she's warmed up to it, which is the right thing to do. We proceed to make out and continue chatting, but nothing else happens, but we continue to chat and laugh. And so part of the thing that you'll learn is the two steps forward one step back when you encounter resistance and that's where obviously if you'd have been more familiar with my work you would have known to apply what's in three percent man to successfully lead things to a conclusion in the bedroom like they happened the first time around but more than likely he's in his head he's thinking about it too much i gotta be nice i gotta be sure of us oh she just broke up with her boyfriend i don't want to rush things for her. but the point being is your job as a man in the interaction is to hang out have fun and hook up and you started the hooking up part, but for whatever reason, you stopped. It's your job to lead that because, again, at the end of the day, it's got to be the man's job. It's the man's responsibility. In other words, the man has to be responsible for the sex. She's got to be able to blame you and just say, oh, it just kind of happened. It was wonderful. We had this chemistry and it just happened. The night comes to an end and we are still having a great time and we are laughing as I'm getting ready to go. I definitely say that's a missed opportunity. He says, I wait till late the next day to reach out and say, hey, thanks for the great evening. It was awesome catching up with you, to which she responded with something similar. We chat sporadically throughout the next two days, and then her tone changes. Well, first off, again, you haven't read the book, but I wouldn't have reached out the next day like that. I would have just let it be and see what happens. Because the idea is you're trying to create the conditions to where as she starts to develop stronger feelings for you, she'll make more of an effort. And when you get impatient, which obviously it sounds like you're starting to get at this point, you're thinking, I want a relationship with her now. Now's the right time. Let me move this along. And now you're trying to move things a little quicker than she's ready for. Because if she's reaching out, say you waited a couple of days and then she texted you said, hey, I had a great time the other night. You'd be like, I did too. Let's definitely get together again soon what's your schedule like and then you just make the next date but that you didn't give that a chance to happen because now you're pushing too much for this because remember she just got out of a relationship and there's you have to figure that the other guy's probably on some level still in the picture and may at some point try to come back into the picture and if you're pushing her and trying to get her to spend more time with you before she's ready you'll literally drive her right back into the ex-boyfriend's arms and then you kind of get stuck in friend zone again so he continues he says we're already having a already having a hunch i read out and ask her flat out if everything is cool it's a bad way to go you're in your head you're thinking of a relationship did i do something to upset the queen i don't want her to be mad at me i hope he didn't do anything wrong that that's not the actions of a confident guy that's expecting something to happen. That's a guy that's unsure of himself. And what a woman needs in a situation like this, especially after just breaking with a boyfriend, is a guy that knows what he wants. He's direct, he's decisive, and he goes for it. And now you're acting unsure of yourself. You're acting like on some level you think you don't deserve her. She replies with a version of, yes, I am coming to terms with the fact that me and dude X aren't meant to be together. I'm just a little down right now is all. 
Even before I found your ridiculously insightful content, I knew not to be the gay friend therapist. So I told her, no sweat. I completely understand. I can give you your space. I wouldn't have been saying something like that. When she said, if you're talking the phone, she says, I'm a little down right now. I was like, you know what you need? And she says, what? More fun with me. Let's get together and have some fun. Make the next date. That's what you should have done. Because again, if you can be an escape and you can be fun and you can make her smile and laugh, she's going to forget about the other dude. But if you're trying to apply pressure and what you're communicating with this sentence here, I completely understand, I can give you space, is you're focused on a relationship now. And probably there's going to be, the more she gets involved with you, the more potential drama there's going to be. In other words, she's not going to feel just free to kind of come to you at her pace. She's going to feel like you're kind of pressuring her a little bit and you're pushing for a relationship when she's still trying to get over the sting of the end of the last relationship. And I left it at that. We did not speak for about a week and a half. And then after a sparse conversation, I invited her to grab dinner again tonight to which she responded. Again, that's why you say, hey, when are you available? We should get together again. But it sounds like he probably continued texting her throughout the week, even though he told her he would give her space. And it just becomes obvious to her because women have just been through. They're just better at this game than us guys are because they've had more practice at it. And so she can tell that this guy, you know, that you're coming on strong and you're looking for a relationship. And you're just like, are you ready for a relationship yet? Okay, I'll give you a call in a couple of days. Are you ready for a relationship yet? And then after a while, the woman just gets tired of it. And then that's where she says, I just think of you as a friend. Let's just keep it on a platonic level. That's the risk you run by being too pushy and calling and texting too much. It's like you got a mixture of nice guy, but you're also pursuing a little too much. You're telling her you're going to back off and give her space, but you're not really doing that. So she responds when he asks for an immediate dinner date. I'm going camping this weekend to get off the grid for a few days, to which I responded with, sounds like a great time. Have fun and I'll hear from you when I do. That kind of sounds like you might be a little irritated that she didn't want to get together. It's almost like, a, hey, have a nice life. I'm not going to call or text you anymore. I plan on sticking to no contact until I hear from her or I don't. Do you have any advice for me going forward? Yeah, I would immediately read my book and stop trying to cherry pick information in the videos. You got to the first date, but you didn't really know what to do on the first date. And it's obvious that you didn't really know how to handle lining up the second date. And you're kind of because you're worried about upsetting her, you're being a little too nice, you're pursuing too much also, but you're not making the dates like I talk about in the book. I'm currently not looking for a relationship with other women, even though I have opportunities, because obviously you're looking for a relationship with her and she can sense and she can feel that. Instead of just hanging out, having fun and hooking up, no strings attached, being easygoing, easy to get along with, easy to be with, it makes the choice easy for her to make and move towards you. But right now, the vibe you're giving off is you're pushing her away. Because you're trying to act coy and like you're not really looking for anything, but you're still calling and texting too much. He says, help me as I am at a huge loss. Should I cut bait with this girl or hang back and see how it goes? Well, you should hang back and see how it goes. The reason you want to cut bait is because you're impatient and you want it to be resolved right now. And that's the wrong mindset to take because women want to feel safe and comfortable. And if you're constantly creating the conditions where she can feel safe and comfortable and she's not sure where she stands with you or if you're interested or if she's going to see you again and she's got other – she's there's you're probably not the only dude in her life. There's probably two or three other guys waiting in the wings that are calling and texting. And so whoever – the most masculine one is, the one that's the hardest to figure out, that's the most mysterious, and it makes her feel free to kind of come and go as she pleases, like the Thich Nhat Hanh quote, you must love in such a way that the person you love feels free. That's the guy that she's going to gravitate towards. And when the way you're acting is a good way to continue to keep yourself stuck in friend zone. So read the book, learn the fundamentals. Hang out, have fun, hook up, leave the relationship stuff to her. So I'd wait to hear from her because that's basically what you told her. 
And when she hasn't heard from you, it might be a week or two before you hear from her next. When she does reach out, hey, it's awesome to hear from you. We should get together and catch up. Love to see you. What's your schedule like? And then just make a date. And then get off the phone. Read the book, dude. You can't short. You can't shortcut it. There's no shortcuts to success. So let's go to the second email. He says, "Thank you, Coach. I've watched a lot of your videos, and I've recently bought both books via Amazon, the hard copies. I could really use your advice. Short story. It's very complicated. We're both single. Both never married. No kids. She's three years older. She's 45, and I'm 42. And I've known her for 30 years." friends of families, and my older sister. I've loved her since I met her, and she knows we both had many relationships, all failed. How can I show her to think differently about me? Well, that statement right there shows that you're seeking her approval. It's not ma- There's nothing masculine about that. It's like you're trying to prove yourself to her. Please notice me, your highness. That is the wrong mindset. If you valued yourself and you saw yourself as a catch, you would just think of her as potentially another possibility. We talk for our phone calls, texting quick replies. If not, she's apologizing and explaining. I try not to say I'm sorry or apologize or beg or pressure her. I do keep it real. So that tells me you're probably all focused on a relationship and you're thinking, hey, we've known each other 30 years. We should just go from that to being in a relationship. And it doesn't work, dude. You got to learn the process that's that's in the book. Just because you've known her for 30 years, you've been interacting with her for the most part on a platonic way, hoping that things are going to change. But the way things are going to change is because you make things change by being attractive and being masculine and interacting with her in a romantic way instead of the friend way that's basically calling her and getting in touch to basically say, hey, can I get out of friend zone yet? Hey, can I get out of friend zone yet? Hey, can I get out of friend zone yet? It's not going to work that way. Obviously, it hasn't worked in three decades. That strategy is, it's a failure. We complement each other and know a lot about each other. She's a psychiatric nurse practitioner, and I'm fucking crazy about her, and it's never wavered. Any advice is she is just placating me or pacifying me and likes the attention, an old friendly friend, nice guy. Well, obviously, you're probably doing almost all of the pursuing as well, instead of being mysterious and letting her come to you at her pace. She calls me and we talk for over an hour once a week or once every two weeks. I stop texting her and calling her. And she's told me I can call her, but I've told her to call me if she wants to. And when I try to walk away, she immediately responds with text, phone calls, sometimes twice a day. She likes pictures of me on my sister's Facebook page posts and my Instagram posts. So the subtle thing to understand about walking away or no contact is a lot of you guys use that as like a the magic pill for everything. And you just don't understand the fundamentals. The reason you back off is because you notice or you should be able to see that it's not really going anywhere. It's kind of stuck in friend zone. And then when you stop moving forward and you stop reaching out to her, think about it from this perspective. Say you met a girl and fell in love that lives near you and you start dating. And because, you know, obviously we haven't gotten to the part yet in your email, but she lives in a different part of the country. But just imagine you meet a girl in your city, you start dating. You're going to kind of lose interest in this girl that's on the other end of the country because you're hanging out, having fun, and hooking up with a girl that's close to you, that's in proximity. And so what would happen? You wouldn't be calling or texting this girl at all. And if there's any kind of attraction on her part, she's going to reach back out and wonder what happened to you, what you're doing, what you're up to. And that's that's the tennis match that you want to see. It's when the other person's kind of taking you for granted and and blowing you off and not really excited about hanging out, you just kind of let them be. And you can do the same thing with friends as well. If you got friends that are kind of taking you for granted and don't really seem that excited about spending time with you or getting together or making plans, just don't ask. Don't call. Don't text. Just let them be. Maybe they're busy. And after you haven't talked in a few weeks or a month or two, be like, hey, man, we should get together and catch up. It's just part of noticing how all of the people in your life are treating you and how much of an effort or not that they're actually making 
to make them make you feel like they care about you. <clears throat> so the fact that she's reaching out after you kind of disappear shows that there's some kind of interest. And if you're doing these, whether it's FaceTime chat or Skype or some other kind of video app where you're talking at some point, you're like, you should hop on a plane and come see me. Or you hop on a plane and go see her and stay with her, whatever it happens to be. You know, I've over the years dated a lot of women that are international, so there's always going to be air travel. And I've kind of sworn that off the last couple of years because at the end of the day, if you're going to date somebody who lives in another part of the country or another part of the world or a different country completely, the more you date and the longer you're together, at some point, it's you, you're either going to end up in the same city or marriage has got, you know, especially if you're dating somebody international, at some point that's going to come up and you have to think about those things if you're going to date somebody internationally, if that's what you want to do. And for me personally, I've just decided it's awesome, but I don't want to get married. But that's just me. So in this particular case, it's like you got to think about these things. You got to think about the logistics of that. She's, you know, at some point, if you're going to stay together, in other words, somebody's going to move. And if you're not interested in moving and she's not, what's the point? I think she's just being nice and friendly, but when I cut contact and say, have a great June or a great summer, or take care, when you say take care to somebody, it's kind of like have a nice life. That's what that means, especially when you say that to a woman. They know what that means. She just responds a lot. Yeah, because scarcity creates value. So you kind of disappear and she starts valuing you more. And that's what you're looking for. If you get her to the point, like I talk about, the man should never be doing more than 20 to 30% of the calling, texting, and pursuing if you want a woman's attraction to grow slowly over time. That's just the way it is. It's got to be her idea. If the woman's always chasing you, you don't have to worry about getting dumped. So you're, there's obviously signs that she has some kind of interest in you because when you disappear, she starts moving forward after you. And those are the moments when that's what you're looking for when you back off is her to start reaching out. When she starts reaching out, that's when you make dates. But ultimately, you got to be making a date for her to fly in and come see you or spend the weekend or a week, whatever it happens to be, or driving if she's closer. The big problem is I live in California and she lives in New Jersey and my folks live in Texas and she recently broke up with a recent boyfriend who wasn't treating her right and rented a beach house on the beach for the summer in Jacksonville Beach, Florida. By herself and left suddenly, left her car rented to drive and took off for Jacksonville where she's got friends. She's got lots of friends on Facebook, lots of pictures with dudes. I'm not on Facebook anymore. I don't like it. I haven't seen her in person for 10 years but keep in contact and neither of us have ever married or had kids. I don't think she wants kids. I don't think I want kids and she doesn't want kids. She's very short, very pretty, super sexy. How the hell can I convince her? Again, that mindset. I can, I'm begging this woman to notice me. That's, that's not attractive, dude. It's the complete wrong mindset. That's what he says. He says, how the hell can I convince her to give me a chance or try me out or sleep with me? It's like buying a used car. We have known each other for 30 years. Obviously, it's very complicated. She's turning 46 in July and I'm 42, so she's older. It hits me again and again to just tell her goodbye. I want more than friendship. It isn't enough with her. Again, if she's reaching out, the goal is to get her to hop on a plane to come see you. If she offers, if she says, I don't know, I'm not sure, uh, just say, hey, you know what? When you figure it out, when you've got time and you figure you can get time to get away to come see me, let me know. I'd lo love to hang out. It'd be great to hang out. We haven't seen each other in 10 years. It'd be awesome. And if she won't make plans to come see you and say a couple days or a week goes by, and then you're like, hey, did you book your ticket? Have you found flights? Have you looked for flights? When are you going to be able to come see me? And she gives you the, oh, I don't know, I'm not sure, I'm still thinking about it. But hey, I wanted to talk and chat and catch up and see how you've been. I'd be like, hey, I've been great. Things have been really busy. Can't really talk right now. But, you know, i definitely love to see you. So when you figure out your schedule and you want to come see me, let me know. And then leave it at that. And say a couple days later, she's like, hey, what are you doing? What are you up to? Hey, did you figure out your schedule yet? You come to see me? 
And she goes, well, no, I'm still thinking about it. Like I said, ask twice when she's reached out. Like I talk about in Seven Principles, get an X back. And if she won't make plans or gives you the runaround, then in your mind, your mindset needs to be, obviously she's not interested or whatever's going on in her life. She's not, she doesn't like me enough to hop on a plane after 30 years and come see me when I've tried twice to get her to do that. And therefore, I'm going to assume she's not that into it or she just likes the attention and validation that she gets from me. And I'm not going to participate in that anymore because it just doesn't work for me. So you don't have to say anything to her. You just you try to make dates twice in a row on both times when she reached out to you first and she doesn't want to come see you and or she, at least she hasn't made the effort. Then from that point forward, when she does reach out, hey, oh, hey, great to hear from you. Send two or three texts back and forth. Or if she calls you, talk for two or three minutes. And then this is the response you're going to get or you're going to send. Hey, it was really awesome hearing from you, but you know, I got I'm real jammed up right now and I can't talk. I gotta run. You keep in touch. And then that's the kind of response you're always gonna give her. Because think about it. Now if you've met somebody else and you're happy and you're dating and you got this girl on the other side of the country that just wants to call and waste your time because she's lonely after her last relationship didn't work out, you're not interested in being the gay male girlfriend or the therapist. You're interested in hanging out, having fun, and hooking up. And so therefore, the only way you'll ever bring up getting together again is if she brings it up first. So when you kind of, you're constantly giving her, you talk for two or three minutes max, two or three texts max, and you're always exiting the conversation saying, hey, nice hearing from you, keep in touch, I got to run. One of two things will happen. She'll either bring up getting together or she'll just stop contacting you altogether. And that's what, that's what you want to know. If she's into you, she'll make time to see you and come see you. And if not, she'll just kind of fade away once she realizes that you're no longer going to be her gay male girlfriend or her emotional therapist or, or emotional tampon or her therapist. That's the right way to handle it. But again, you got to read 3% Man because this will really help fill in the knowledge gap so you start interacting with her in a way that actually will work and so you can get what you want. So if you're, again, if you haven't read either of my books, in these cases, 3% Man would be your starting point. And then Mastering Yourself, both of them are free at understandingrelationships.com. All you got to do is subscribe to the email newsletter. As soon as you hit submit, it'll take you right to the members area and you can read whatever book you're most interested in first. And if you're in a situation, you're struggling, it's kind of complicated and you're not really sure what to do or some of the things that the woman you're involved with has said to you and you're going what the hell does this mean how do i get out of this i would go to understandrelationships.com click the products tab at the top of your screen on any page and book a coaching session with yours truly so i can help you figure out the best course of action and strategy to get what it is that you want and until next time i will talk to you soon